All right, we're fucking back. Had a little, uh, had a little hiatus. I got kind of fucking busy the last two days, but fucking back on track. Arms tonight. Arm day. Day 57? Whatever. I don't, I don't remember. In the 50s, so... The last week, I've been totally fucked up on the meals. Uh, like, having to stay up extra late studying and shit. Dude, I've been, like, probably averaging 4,000 calories per day instead of the six that I should be hitting. I'm, da I'm down to, like, four... I don't know what I'm saying. I'm down to, like, 247 in the morning. Dude, that is so fucked. But a few days of, uh, you know, consistently hitting the 6K... Should be back on track. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. But in terms of uh, like actually bulking or cutting, the most important thing is either having your gas tank completely full all the time, like when you're bulking up, or completely empty when you're trying to lose weight. Because just as like a, uh, like a general idea, your muscles have a shit ton of carbs and water in them right that's why people talk about carving up for like a bodybuilding show so inside all your fucking muscles you've got muscle glycogen which is just like sugar pretty much you got about I don't know how many grams at least five or six hundred grams of carbs just stored throughout your muscles at a baseline level so if you want to build muscle you want to just be overfilling your muscles with carbs constantly, right? So that's the point of bulking. You eat a fucking ton of food, more than your maintenance calories. That's going to keep you completely full, and that's what's going to be conducive to actual growth. And then, in the opposite case for dieting down, you want your carbs in your muscles to be completely depleted because your body is going to burn carbs first, as a fuel source so if you're completely depleted of carbs eating in a real calorie deficit then your body's gonna be forced to burn fat tissue and that's the only way that you're gonna gain or lose weight is by eating a calorie surplus or a calorie deficit there is no way around it there are no tricks or you know special workouts that are gonna help you lose fat or, well, obviously workouts aren't going to help you build muscle. But in terms of weight gain or loss, uh, you know, primarily fat gain or loss, it's completely dependent on the amount of calories that you eat every day. Uh, people just don't seem to fucking understand that. So, enough of this little you know, sprinkling of information. Let's fucking drink this pre- Get in there and start thrashing arms, goddammit. Immaculate is an understatement to describe that fucking arm day. Holy hell. There we go. Fucking everything felt good. Went super heavy. Got fucking pumped. Now it's time to refuel. So, that calf pump was crazy too. So now I gotta think to myself, fuck, if I gotta, if I gotta pump this crazy and I'm down like four fucking pounds, that's still pissing me off. I gotta get back on track. But if the pump is this crazy now, after I get back on track with the fucking food, it's gonna be even crazier. So, still goal and weight 260. I gotta fucking get into hammer time. Or no, uh, clock into overtime. You get what I'm saying. So post-workout shake. Got the protein, the dextrose. Uh, I mean, I literally just finished my last set of calves five minutes ago. So let's just slam this as quick as possible. Jumpstart the uh, recovery process.
<laughs> oh my god. So if you actually do the Dextro shake, you know it's sweet as all hell. Okay, let's get out of here. So let's, uh, if you're here, you've probably seen the TikTok. Uh, and I make a lot of posts, you know, like hating on science-based lifters. Uh, and I talk about like ego lifting all the time. So do I mean that exactly? No, that's kind of, the TikTok's a little more shock value-esque. It's not really necessarily my exact thoughts and opinions. So in terms of, let's just say the ego lifting joke, uh, when I say that, I really just mean intense lifting. I really just mean like going hard is all, I'm saying is all hell for a little bit today. I don't know why, but I just mean going hard as fuck lifting heavy as possible for reps. Uh, you know, maybe degrading your form a little bit. Uh, and just pushing yourself as hard as possible in the gym, every set. That's the goal. Ideally, every set that I do should be like max effort as hard as possible, like to failure. Now, obviously not every set is going to be like that. You know, you technically always have a little bit left in the tank. You know, if you tell a fucking woman to deadlift 405 out of nowhere, she probably couldn't do it. But, you know the analogy, you put their kids under under a car, adrenaline kicks in, and then they get superhuman strength. I definitely think that's kind of uh, going to apply in the gym as well. Where if you've got a lame loser mindset, you're just like, oh, I'll do my sets, whatever. Uh, okay, that feels kind of hard, I guess I'll stop. Uh, you're a fool and you're not going to grow. Okay, you got to just fucking... <laughs> As corny as it sounds, like, you gotta be hype for every set. Even if, you know, in between sets you kind of chill, you goof off a little, talk to your buddies. But you gotta take at least 20 seconds before your set. Say to yourself, okay, let's, let's fucking go. Come on, come on, come on! And then you grab the weight. That's gonna be way more conducive with real long-term growth than just exercising, right? I see a lot of people in the gym or they're lifting weights, but they're just exercising. They're not really lifting. And obviously not everybody wants to be a badass bodybuilder and try to, you know, become a monolith of muscle. But why wouldn't you fucking go hard? Doesn't make sense. So my hating on the science-based lifters, like when I say, oh, I never listen to science-based lifters. Or like, or when I hate on like JPG and stuff like that, uh, it's not like I'm not actually hating on that. I'm not hating on science-based lifting, right? Obviously, like I want to when I train and when I'm thinking about training, I want to do it in such a way that is cl as close to the best possible situation as I can get, right? That's why, I, that's why I take all my vitamins, you know, that's why I count my calories and my macros. And that's why I've sort of, you know, thought about my split and accustomed it to myself. And that's why I, you know, go hard in the beginning of the workout. That's why I do as many sets as I do. Because as far as I can tell, that's the best case scenario for me to build muscle. And obviously, the only way I learned that is by, you know, taking in information from other lifters and like, watching YouTube videos to learn about shit. If there's a big guy in the gym, maybe go up to him, ask him for advice or little tips and whatnot. So, to an extent, yeah, I mean, it is a science. But, let's take two lifters. You know, I love doing this little analogy. If you give one beginner lifter a whole year and you just tell him to go to the gym, you don't tell him to watch lifting videos at all, you just tell him Go to the gym, lift some fucking weights, go hard. Uh, maybe talk to some of the gym guys, learn some info there. 
You give them a whole year of that. And you compare that to some kid who spent a whole year just, you know, looking up the most optimal way to do a lat pull down. And uh, just like, because when I see people do that, when I see like an Instagram reel talking about, this is the most optimal way to build your triceps. All that the video is, is fucking showing lame, half-assed lifting. And sure, you know, the guy's explaining it well. He's got Sharpie on his tricep. And he's like, you want to position your body at a 45 degree angle to the cable and fully extend. Sure. Whatever. You did the exercise right. But when I see those lifters posting, they talk about intensity. Like, they'll say, you're going to want to, you know, do an intense set. But it never is. You're never going to... I just don't see them, you know, pushing forward the idea that you got to just go hard as fuck. And that's what's going to make you grow. Right? You ever hear of, like, farmer, farmer strength? That's because they just fucking lift all day. Boom, they're strong. Because they're, you know, they're going hard. So... Obviously, there's some validity to what they're saying about, you know, muscle activation and whatever. But I feel like they're really lacking the um, the curriculum of intensity, right? That's why, you know, if I ever, when I, whenever I watch, like, lifting videos, I love watching old training clips, like 80s, 90s, you know, Jay Cutler fucking looking like a beast, Kevin Lavrone, like shoulder pressing four plates. Tom Platts, you know, just fucking screaming on the leg press. Or not the leg press, he doesn't do that. On the leg extension. Uh, Mike Metzer. I don't I don't really want or Dorian Yates, another perfect example. Right? Those guys went fucking hard. And they didn't overcomplicate their training. Right? Who's gonna who's gonna get a better workout? The guy who just spent like a cumulative amount of time of like 20 hours watching uh, optimal lifting videos, or the guy who goes into the gym and he thinks to himself, okay, I'm gonna work out my quads today. I'm not gonna stop until I kill myself, until I literally destroy my quads. That intense mindset is going to overpower, you know, the optimal mindset every day of the week. Now, ideally, you can have a mix of both worlds. But if you don't have intensity, and sure, you know, you do your optimal workout, whatever. You do your your bench and your flies and your, uh, your cable press or whatever. But you don't have intensity. You're not going hard as fuck. You're not getting hype. You're not going to fucking grow. So, I mean, in my mind, I think my workouts are perfectly sound in terms of uh, fatiguing the muscle and stimulating protein synthesis. But, you know, if you follow every one of my lifts to the T, but you don't push yourself, guess what? You're going to get zero results. Well, you'll plateau at a much earlier rate than if you, you know, go hard. That's one thing I've not been seeing as of uh, as of late in the fitness community. You know, the only time I see people going hard is if they're doing a one rep max, which is not going to build any muscle at all. They're just doing it for fun. Uh, actually, yeah, that's pretty much the only time I see people going super hard. For the most part. You know, obviously not everyone. But... You get what I'm saying? If you just, you know, if you actually have intent and purpose in your workout, and your music's blaring, you're fucking, your heart's beating, you're getting excited, that's the way that you're going to grow. That is the way to do it. So let's see, what else? Uh... Yeah, nothing else just changing. I mean, we got at least another 
I don't even know how long I'm gonna have to push this Volk. At least two more months. At least. So, I think that about does it. Let's fucking get back to the house, eat some more food, uh, and then go to bed. Huh. Arm day tomorrow. I know what, I, what the fuck am I saying? Leg day tomorrow. So, I will see you then. God damn it. All right, this is gonna be day 50, fuck, I think nine, 59. Legs, got some fucking legs to do tonight. Fucking excited. I, uh, the last, so I had to take a little bit of a break from squatting, because like my adductor was really tight. That's sort of like, that's the muscle that squeezes your legs together. So you're starting to get a little fucked up. So I took like two weeks off squatting. But it felt good last time, so should feel even better this time. Uh, but unrelated to that, I mean standard procedure. It's just gonna do all of hamstrings first. Variety of you know different versions of seated hamstring curls. Maybe I'll throw in some RDLs of some kind. Then warm up the quads a little bit on leg extension, hit some squats, and then, you know, just keep slamming quads, be it via, you know, machine leg press or more leg extension, maybe some pendulum squat, maybe some Smith machine sissy squats. A lot of exercises at my disposal, so I'll try to figure out what's going to feel the best and then just fucking go hard. So, no point dilly dallying. Let's, uh, let's fucking get started. Whew. All right, legs fucking done. Even without squats, still a crazy pump. But, uh,. The only reason I didn't squat is my fucking adductor hurts. Maybe I should do some kind of like massage, PT, stretching, whatever. I don't know. I don't know how I fucked it up either. I didn't really like, I didn't do something where I felt it. It's just kind of been nagging me. But, you know, I definitely attribute a lot of my quad growth to leg extensions. Honestly, yeah, leg extensions. That's pretty much my favorite quad exercise like if i had to pick just one to do perpetually probably gonna be fucking leg extensions because what's the what's the point of bodybuilding training right uh you know for the most part isolation work you know when you have chest day you got a whole day dedicated to fucking chest back same thing all back so legs i mean you know you finish hamstrings you do a bunch of fucking crazy hamstring curls Quads, fucking, in terms of just activating the quads, you know, leg extensions is fucking bread and butter. So, still going to squat, but, I mean, honestly, I probably could have today, but 
I know I just would have hurt myself more. So. Damn, yeah, what fucking did it was doing those RDLs. That fucking pulled it just a little. Just enough to fuck me. So. I've been sipping on this fucking, uh, the dextrose shake. So, you know, right after every lift, 50 grams of, uh, dextrose, a few scoops of protein. It's just gonna fucking launch nutrients into your muscles. Because dextrose is basically like the simplest sugar you can get your hands on, right? Like table sugar and candy, it's still multiple. Uh, like, you know, carbohydrate molecules, like multiple glucose molecules connected together. So they got to jump through a few extra steps of digestion. But with the dextrose, you know, it's just straight up like glucose, right? And that's the shit that's in your blood when you eat some kind of carb and you digest it. So what's going to happen is instantly you're going to spike your blood glucose, which is going to trigger... You know, your body to release some insulin, which is going to just send that all out and, uh, you know, get to, uh, what's the word? Give you some good nutrient partitioning, right? I'm not going to say one way or the other that, you know, the anabolic window, you know, that time right after you lift where you need to eat food to improve your results. I'm not going to say that's like... 100% real, but logically, I mean, after you work out, what, your body's in a stress state, you're fucking, (laughs) you're fucking tired, uh, you know, more than likely you've got some, uh, some cortisol flowing around, not good for you, so the sooner you can get fuel, I mean, the better, just makes sense. Oh, huh. yeah, that's fucking sweet as all hell. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's fucking go home. Uh, so I got I got my spring break. I got a week off next week. So, in terms of how that's gonna affect these videos. It's not. I mean, they're still going to keep coming out. But, you know, you guys have been asking for it. So, I would not be surprised if you look at your YouTube notifications or your uh, your recommended page and you see a full day of eating soon. How do I get fucking... How do I get all this food in? How the hell does that happen? Uh... I guess I have no point talking about it now. You'll see it then. Let's see. What else? So I've said this before. uh, Warrants mentioning. People that skip legs. Ugh. What the fuck? I don't get it. I don't understand what you're doing. It's, uh... If you're just a gym goer... You know, like, your goal is just to go to the gym. Whatever. I don't know. I guess if you're not, like, that serious about it, then, you know, just do what you like. So if you just like hitting chest and shoulders and arms, you know, whatever. If that's actually just, you know, what you want to do, there's not really any shame in it. But, you know, if you're an actual, you know, meathead at heart... And, you know, you're going to the gym every fucking day. You're trying to get huge. Or at least, you know, that's the mindset that you want to have. How are you going to neglect any muscle group? Right? Why would you think to yourself, wow, I, I want to look like this guy. Man, that guy's legs are fucking huge. Well, that guy's back is huge. Why would you have that sort of, like, admiration mentality towards something? But then not want to put the work in to achieve it. Right? It just doesn't make any sense. So, you know, similarly to, similarly to that, on like a tiny bit of a tangent, uh, the same thing sort of goes for having a favorite 
muscle group to hit and a least favorite muscle group to hit. Uh, I mean, for me, I fucking like it all. You know, they're all different, of course. Like, arm day, <laughs> in terms of general fatigue, is probably the easiest. Uh, not to say I'm going easy, but, you know, it's the least fatiguing, and it's fucking cool to have an arm pump. You know, your arms look fucking huge. It's sweet. Chest, is to lift some heavy-ass weight. And then I also love getting a fucking sweet chest pump. Same for back, same for fucking legs. I mean, you know, if your goal is to get big and to, like, fucking build your body in all aspects, the idea of, like, repeating to yourself, wow, I fucking hate leg day. Oh, wow, I, I don't really like back day. Or, you know, whatever muscle group, you know, insert for you. Just thinking that you're setting yourself up to have a worse workout for that specific body part, you know? Now, I'm not going to tell you, you know, man up, don't fucking, don't fucking complain or whatever. But, you know, I'm just sort of elaborating the fact that if you associate something with a negative mentality, you know, guess what's going to happen? You're going to start to neglect that specific muscle group. If somebody thinks to themselves, man, I don't like working out arms. What body part do you think they're most likely going to skip? Fucking arms. You know, if you want to get big as fuck all over, you got to hit it. All over. So, even if you still want to say to yourself, man, I, ah, fucking leg day is hard. Like, even me, you know, I'll, uh, like, I was just think a lot of the times on legs, especially, I'll be thinking about the leg day days before. Uh, I wouldn't call it, like, dreading it, but I would describe it more so as, like, feeling an anxious anticipation. Because I'm like, oh, shit, leg day, that's going to be hard. Because, I mean, in terms of all the body parts that I hit in my split, legs is the most, uh, most exerting, it's the most exhausting. But, you know, I don't use that as a negative, right? At the end of the workout, as long as I went actually fucking hard, I get to say to myself, wow, that's a good-ass fucking pump, hell yeah, even though it was hard. So, you know, if you can't stop yourself from saying, man, I fucking hate arm day, figure out some way to embrace the difficulty. It's like, man, I fucking hate this shit. Come on! <laughs> You know, as silly as that sounds, but, you know, the more, uh, I, I say this all the time, the more excited you can be in the gym, the more hyped up, consistently, you know, the guy who's always fucking happy to hit his sets and to finish his workout and to fucking go, get his sweat going, that guy's going to perform way better than anybody else with, you know, a less enthusiastic approach. Right? Everybody's heard the saying, the guy who likes walking is going to go further than the guy who, uh, who likes the destination, right? So, if you can, you know, figure out a way, you know, by you know, adapting your training to your own specific needs, you know, making sure you have a split that's uh, effective for you and that you can maintain, and, you know, picking exercises and workouts that are actually effective uh, then it'll be that much easier for you to enjoy working out and then I say this a lot I mean it's just a positive feedback loop the more efforts you put in the more you're gonna get out right like let's say you're a beginner lifter you just spent or you've been seeing a lot of fitness TikTok. Uh, part of your a few of your buddies are lifting you know they're like hey man come on let's go to the gym well, I just come, come hit arms with us. Like, you know, you start to get that itch that you're like, oh, shit, all right, I do want to get big. So you know, let's say you watch some how-to basic, uh, like, info. You just start consuming knowledge. You figure out a good beginner split. You know, you look up some guy's, you know, basic chest day, basic back day. You get a basic approach to working out. You know, 
if you actually stick to that for, fuck man, I mean, if you're actually going hard, even a month, you will notice changes, uh, be it in strength, you know, how you look, and then what's going to happen after you start to see results? You're going to want fucking more results. Then you're going to put more effort into like obtaining information, making your split more optimal for you. Then you're going to get even better results. More, 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 more. It's just like a constant feedback loop. But, you know, a lot of people will sort of maybe get on that loop for one rotation, maybe two, and then they reach a stagnation point, right? You know, they'll lift for a while, they'll feel to themselves, hey, I mean, I, I know what I'm doing. And then they'll just keep doing the same shit every day. Like, they, they go at the gym with the same mentality, you know, they're not changing their diet, you know, they're not going through gaining phases and dieting phases. They're, they've pretty much plateaued and they're just maintaining uh, a physique that, you know, they're comfortable with having. But, you know, with just a little bit more effort, they could be improving. And, I mean, name one person who doesn't want to be fucking bigger or stronger or leaner. I mean, you, know, you get to walk, you only got one body, man. Why wouldn't you want to be fucking badass? So, you get what I'm saying? If you're a beginner, you got, a, you got about a month, maybe two months, where it might be hard because you haven't seen your results yet. And that's where a lot of people quit. You know, everybody knows fucking New Year's lifters. The gym's packed with newbies for like two weeks. And then, boom, fizzles out. Because they're like, ah, oh, this is fucking hard. I'm going home. I'm done with this. You know? I mean, in a perfect world, I mean, not everybody wants to get jacked. But... I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing some more freaks walking around. That's just what I like. I'm fucking being huge, goddammit. And I'm not even there yet. More, more mass to gain. That's the whole point of this bulk. So, getting close to home. I got a few more meals to finish. Uh, I already took my vitamins. Hell yeah. So... Then I just got to go to bed. Chest day tomorrow. I, I'm i starting to think that I will go to a different gym. Because I want to touch some dumbbells that will actually be heavy. I'm, I'm talking 170s at least. So, hopefully, fucking once I pull up to the lift, it'll be a new gym. We'll have to see how that lines up. So, I will fucking see you next time, goddammit. It's probably not going to hurt to have a set workout plan. Because you don't really know what you're doing yet. You got to get used to lifting weights. Oh. Oh my god, I almost hit a cat. But yeah, okay, so. As a beginner, you know, you don't really know what you're doing yet. You need more experience in the gym. But as you progress, you know, you should be able to understand the general idea of how your workout's going to be. And you'll be able to, you know, change a few things, you know, pick different exercises that, you know, you feel like you're going to like on that specific day. So if you tweak something, you'll be able to just work around it rather than, you know, just having to say, oh, shit, my chest is kind of hurt a little. I guess I won't do any chest. But if you're, you know, if you use your brain, maybe you try out some light pec deck, and that feels okay. You know, you gotta, you gotta be fucking smart with this kind of shit. So, I gotta finish drinking this pre, and then, uh, then we can fucking get in there. Should be dead as fuck. As soon as you take it into your system... Insulin spike, nutrients to the muscle, and you're going to recover uh, 
more at a, let's, let's see, how should I say this? You're not going to like feel night and day crazy once you start doing it. But, you know, the same thing with like taking your vitamins and, uh, oh, it's just a reflection. The same thing with like taking your vitamins and creatine and stuff like that. It's just going to add up over time to improve your results. You know, there's not necessarily one specific aspect of training where, you know, once you implement it, you're going to go, whoa, you know, it's pretty much a long-term thing, but the more that you can implement into your team, the better, right? Let's say you're a lifter, you go to the gym every day, but you don't take any pre-workout and you don't take creatine and you don't sleep that much and you don't really have an awesome workout plan. You just kind of go in and do whatever. You'll get a little bit of results, but you're leaving so much on the table. So the more different avenues of progress that you can optimize, the better. Right? So you take your vitamins, you try to get a lot of sleep. Take your creatine, your pre-workout, the shit that's proven to work. And your dextrose. That's another fucking... That one's kind of... It's kind of an underrated secret. Nobody really talks about that now. Uh, but it's legit. So, fuck. Let's get back to get back to the workout. Yeah, chest. <laughs> Holy shit. Six reps and a half cuz I had him help me on the last one. Fuck yeah. But that's exactly what I was saying after the last chest day. So, if you didn't see it, uh I did four four plates on incline as the first working set, but I only got four and a half reps. Like, I did four, and then I, I needed help on the last one. Uh, and what I was saying then was just the action of touching a weight that you haven't touched in a long time or, you know, that you've never touched before. Just the action of repping it, even for a few, is going to put... Uh, the idea that you can do it into your mind, right? It's going to become a reality that you know you can hit it, right? So let's say, oh my god, I'm, I'm literally just saying the same shit from the last chest day verbatim, but whatever, I'll just run with it. Let's say there's two lifters, right? Uh, both of them have the potential to hit two plates for... Let's just say let's just say a single. I, I don't I don't condone doing one rep maxes, but let's let's just say it for argument's sake. They both have the potential to hit 225. Like that is their absolute max. Now, one of them hit 225 for one last week, and the other one has. Let's say last week the other one failed 225. He has yet to do it. You know, in terms of probability, the guy who has already touched that weight before and knows in his mind like he truly believes that he can do it because he's done it, guess what? He's probably going to hit it again. And the guy who has yet to do it, eh, he might be a little more nervous, a little bit more timid during the set, and, you know, he might not hit it. So I think that's what let me, uh, well, let me get those two extra reps just from you know a few days time from doing it the last set uh, because I just was more confident in myself and I knew I'd be able to hit it so going up in weight like trying to touch a weight that you haven't before for you know a heavy set it can be a little bit uh, a little bit overwhelming like I was definitely getting a little nervous you know four or five with no safeties it's fucking freaky but Still hit it. Felt like a badass after. But uh, what else can I say? So that definitely set the tone for the whole lift. Like when I was warming up, you know, I was whatever. I was, I was excited. Like I wasn't, you know, dreary. But after that first set, I definitely got way more excited. So you know, just bounce around, hit the dumbbells, hit whatever. Crazy chest bump, and then finish with shoulders. Uh, simple, 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 simple. So. Oh shit, I had. Ah. 
So sometimes I think about what I'm going to say during these little car talks, and I was thinking about something earlier, but now I fucking forget it. Ah, what was I going to fucking talk about? Uh, uh, I don't remember. Fuck. I know it was something good, too, because I was like, yeah, that'll be perfect. So, this week's my spring break from school. I think I'm going to I'm going to go back home for at least a few days. So, I'll be in a I'll be in a different gym. A little bit of a change of scenery. And that gym does have heavy dumbbells. I think they go up to 180 at uh it's in Columbus. It's called uh it's called Metro Fitness. It's a fucking badass gym, super old school. It's uh it's the gym that I filmed, you know, spring bulk day one, you know, that first leg day in. And it's fucking badass over there. I love it. If I was still like living in Columbus year round, that'd be my main gym. So keep an eye out for the you know, some new uh fuck. What's the word? New scenery, whatever. Keep an eye out for a new, uh, for a new location in the next few thumbnails. But I'm gonna go home, take my vitamins, fucking eat my last few meals, and sleep all day like a fucking vampire. So I will see you next time. God damn it! Yeah, fuck. Why wait? Let's go fucking hit back. I do not know. My back was fucking killing me today. Oh my goodness. Either way, still hit the weights. Good intensity. I was excited. Got a sweet ass pump. And I mean, what else can you ask for, right? So I got a bit of a long drive home. Uh, yeah, you can see in the back, I got my bin of dirty laundry duffel bag full of like my protein powder and my vitamins and everything fucking else uh, so I got fucking two hours to kill let's see what else do we want to talk about I don't know honestly it gets a little bit repetitive for me to say like oh you gotta be excited in the gym you know, just, just gotta go, man. Just man up and go. Uh, you know, you gotta go hard. You know, fucking load up some weight. Because, I mean, for me, like, that's just, that's just like what I'm wired to do. I don't need to be, like, I don't need anyone else telling me to hit the weight. Right? I'm just hardwired to do it. Like, if I'm tired, whatever, still fucking hit the gym. It's just my thing. So if you've watched these for a little while, <laughs> you would know that I don't deadlift, right? You never see me warming up for a deadlift. I just don't see the benefit. I mean, sure, it's you're definitely going to be tired afterwards, so it's a fatiguing movement, but it just works so many muscles at once, right? Like, if you were to do legit sets of deadlift... Your hamstrings are going to get fucked up in the sense of, you know, they're going to be worked. Same with your glutes. Same with your lower back. Same with your upper back. I mean, it's just going to be so fatiguing that I just don't see the bodybuilding, you know, muscle growth aspect to outweigh the difficulty of the set. You know, I'd rather spend the same amount of energy that I would doing heavy deadlifts on, you know, barbell rows. Or lap pull downs, or you know any other more isolated lift. I almost forgot my fucking dextrose shake. You gotta remind me of this shit. So post workout, every lift. I've been doing this for like a year and a half or so. Uh, 50 grams of dextrose. I might go a little lighter on it if I'm dieting, just because you know it's still carbs. 
So I kind of want to spread my food out throughout the day if I'm trying to lose weight. But for the most part, 50 grams of dextrose, 50 grams of protein shake, you know, protein powder post-workout. Uh, the benefit, you're going to spike your insulin like nothing else. Uh, if you look up the, I forget what it's called, the, the, oh yeah, the glycemic index. So that's essentially a rating scale of 0 to 100 of, you know, a variety of foods on how, well, pretty much just how intensely they're going to spike your blood sugar, right? You know, something like a potato or like a sweet potato or oatmeal, those are going to be low on the glycemic index because they're more complex carbs. They take a little while to digest, whereas, you know, another little step up from that, let's call it like a fruit or something, that's going to be a little bit higher, maybe close to like, I can tell you, maybe 40 or so. I'm just guessing. It's a scale of 0 to 100. And table sugar, that's, uh, I think, sucrose? Whatever. It's like two glu glucose molecules combined. Uh, that's about a 66. Whereas dextrose, the king of all carbs in terms of insulin spike, insulin spiking ability, is going to be a 100. You cannot get a simpler carb than dextrose. So post-workout, you're going to want to eat the simplest fucking carb you can get your hands on, dextrose, with a little bit of protein. And right, the amount of calories that you burn just being alive every day is, let's call it 2,500. If you ate 1,800 calories worth of donuts, ice cream, uh, and chicken wings, but you still only ate 1,800, like you hit 1,800, you stop eating for the day, guess what? You're going to lose weight. And if you do that long enough, if you stay in a calorie deficit long enough, shit, you could even get shredded eating that kind of garbage. And vice versa, you know, you could eat the healthiest foods imaginable, at least, you know, in terms of just like general... Uh, the word like general reputation right like i'm sure people would consider uh grilled chicken to be healthy or like fried vegetables or i don't know what, what else do people call, what kind of carb do people call healthy wheat whole wheat bread the healthier option if you ate all healthy foods like that but you ate higher than your daily caloric expenditure guess what? You're going to gain weight. Now, you know, if you couple lifting with both of those scenarios, then you're either going to build muscle or maintain muscle. You'll build muscle while you gain weight, and you'll probably maintain most of your muscle while you lose it. So when people ask me about, like, how much food should I eat for my bulk? Uh, for one thing, you have to track it. Like, you've got to be OCD every time you eat something. You're reading the label, plug it into your phone. Just get some kind of, like, MyFitnessPal app or whatever. And you got to just figure out how much food you're eating. So, if you manage to actually track all your food, let's, let's call it a week. And that's just as much food as you're hungry for. And you're not, you know, gaining or losing weight then that's going to be a pretty good baseline of your daily uh, calorie expenditure. So, if you want to lose weight and get leaner, you're going to have to eat less than that. And if you want to gain weight and get bigger, you're going to have to eat fucking more than that. Now, how the individual macros, like protein, fats, and carbs come into play, that's where you got to be another level of dedicated. Because rather than just counting the calories and having them add up to a specific number, you've got to count the amount of grams of protein that you eat in a day and the amount of grams of fats and carbs because that's what more hardcore lifters are counting, right? If somebody at your gym is bigger than you by a substantial amount, like they're actually impressive, more likely than not, they're making sure they eat 200 grams of protein a day. 
and they're eating, you know, 100 or 50 grams of fat per day, and however many grams of carbs per day. Now, this kind of stuff, you're just going to have to look it up and figure it out, honestly. If, you, uh, if you're a 150 pound dude, you, uh, you probably eat maybe 2,000 calories a day max. You're going to have to start eating more. Because there's no such thing as a, as a fast metabolism. Right? When people say, oh, I've got a fucking, I can't, I can't get any weight, I've got a fast metabolism. Oh, well, how much food do you eat? Dude, I eat a lot. You don't know how much I eat. I gotta listen to my phone to give me directions. But yeah, I, I eat so much, dude, you don't even know. Well, guess what? You are not gonna get big with that mentality. Right? You gotta man up, look at yourself, and realize, man, maybe I'm not eating as much as I fucking thought. And, you know, just start scarfing it down. This isn't necessarily the... Con this isn't the specific piece of content that you're going to want to watch if you want my actual advice and, like, numerical values for dieting. Uh, I'll probably talk about that really in depth when I do a uh, full day of eating. And then... After this bulk series is over, and when I'm actually doing a, I don't know, what should I even call it? Summer cut? I, I don't know. I'll, it'll be a cool title. But once I'm doing, uh, once I'm dieting, I'll be able to talk a little bit more about that different kind of macros and whatever. So, fuck. Get some rest. Eat your meals, do your 30 minutes of cardio. I know you guys are skipping it. You're not doing it. You're not fucking doing your cardio, asshole. I'm looking right at you. You're not doing your cardio. Guarantee it. You should. 30 minutes every day. Just build up a little bit of a sweat. I'm out. I'm out of here. Let's, let's fucking end this. See you next time.